five, getting those double bombs off and trying to fight early and often. That's what Cloud uh, TSM did versus Cloud9 to get the only victory any LCS team got against uh, C9 in the entire regular split. Zillion also exceptional at stopping your teammates from getting picked off. In games one and two, it's all about Ignar making these snappy engages, finding the opportunity to CC and to knock up one person. Biofrost would very often find himself killed very quickly in these fights. Bjergsen has the ability to stop those engages from being as immediately effective and all eyes will be on him to see how accurate those chrono shifts are and how well-timed they can be throughout the course of this game. Now that we're into Summoner's Rift, doesn't look like we'll have any shenanigans going on here at level one. Everything will just go par for the course. I also like that they pick it into not a lot of CC chaining because even if Ignar tries to lock up Bjergsen, uh, the follow-up might be difficult, like Solo would already have to have a flank or would have to be in position to flash to get a mini knockup, or Power of Evil would have to make a an aggressive Azir sec, Sharima shuffle, um, all these different names we have for the <laughs> Azir going in and using the ult to push him back. Santorin's off to a level two possible gank on bottom side, though. This could be really cheeky. We'll see if Ignar walks up and nice. Getting the flash very early there. Biofrost recognizing if he gets thrown up into the air, he's in a lot of trouble and has to flash anyway. So why not expend it early? Save the health bar. Good move there, getting the early summoner spell from Santorin. I will say, I think there is more pressure on TSM, though, with this change. FlyQuest have really good um, scaling 5-on-5. Five five. Having their hands on the Azir and the DPS output that you can get from this champion later into the game, um, scaling with the AP and the attack speed. It's definitely right in Power of Evil's wheelhouse. Still the highest DPS player in the entire league. Even more so after the series versus Golden Guardians, where yeah. <laughs> he completely topped the charts. Pat so, the stats with that one. Exactly. But also, Broken Blade on this Irelia. Broken Blade is the type of player that can pop off if he's given a carry champion. And Irelia is the kind of champion that can do that even more so than Aatrox can. Irelia is one of those champions that you put there with some Wub Wub music and have a montage. Riot House is legal. <laughs> 1v5 dash, six item, full build, 25 minutes, all caps YouTube title. This is you better champion. be ganking when the drop comes because Aurelia's yeah, going have in. You making a play when the base <laughs> when drops. The Otherwise, drops. it's not even worth it. But Broken Blade, I'll also be trying to see how well he's able to pop off in these fights. There's a lot that he'll have to dodge around. He's got to work around the Azir wall. He has to work around the moving CC that is Ignar. He's going to have to dodge sweet spots from Solo. And you know the pillar is going to be placed down too. So we're going to need some fancy footwork from this guy to make these things happen. But in the past, he's been a player that can step up for this team during playoffs. So I have faith that we'll get to see a couple flashy moves out of him here in this third game. Bjergsen has not the control of the lane here early on. Zillion's <laughs> not exactly one of those. Uh, he has not. He has not. The, yeah, we're going into ye old English version <laughs> of this because I was going to say he has something, but then I was like, wait, no, he doesn't have anything. He's standing underneath his turret. So we have to, we have to switch it up a little bit sometimes. Power yeah. of evil, control over the lane here on the Azir. Everything is going okay for him. Bottom side, 2v2s have been pretty scrappy throughout the course of this series so far. Every time the cameras pan down here, we've usually seen these guys trading back and forth with each other, but right now they seem pretty content to just farm. Yeah, the big difference here in this game is, is the early gank. Santorin spending that time blowing the flash off Bilefrost. It completely changes the way that you can play these melee into melee support matchups with, with CC. Ignar trying to bait there a little bit. Um, but again, Biofrost is playing so much more defensively now because they know they have no deep vision on Santorin, no, uh, no way to uh, figure out if he is actually revisiting bottom. And without the flash, Biofrost is actually a viable target, even though he's got Aftershock. Dardok will come behind for the possible lane gank. Engage from Biofrost. Turtle gonna be chain CC'd there. Forced to flash away at the very end. Barely gonna be kept alive. Damage going down on the Bio now. And it looks like first blood's over to FlyQuest. 
Solo showing up along with Broken Blade, but now it's Solo in the middle of three. He'll likely fall. There's the kill on the back end of the fight for TSM. It's a one for one. Kabe tries to flash forward to make the play on the turtle right as his back completes. It's a double kill for Broken Blade. There's your montage music that I'm talking about. Broken Blade's got two right here at the start. Ignar tries to get away. It's a triple kill over to Broken Blade. Power of Evil will finish him off. Six kills, five minutes, game three. The blood is pumping there, Flowers. Everybody looking for kills. Broken Blade wanted the extra double there. Takes down Ignar. So many summoner spells blown off the bottom half of the map. And you called it out there in the double teleports with Broken Blade and Solo coming down. Even though Turtle survived on single digit HP and turning around to get that kill onto Biofrost. They still got one back for TSM because Solo was too far away from the rest of the team upon arrival with those teleports. So they immediately go for a swap. Look at this three-person move to the top side for FlyQuest. They've sent Turtle right back down to bottom side to show and give a bait. When you see oh, Turtle down man. there, you think... And Solo's, he's playing it very modestly. He's like, oh man, please don't hit me, bro. Just take it easy. Patience. I know, I know you got three Patience. kills on you. Oh, they wanted him to uh, queue for that. And Broken Blade with the sixth sense does not take the bait. Oh, walk or, away or from Willie. the bait. They're really invested uh, in this. All right, here we go. Broken Blade with a flash out. Even in all those plays, bottom side, he didn't use his flash. He throws out the ulti. He tries to slash and dash around, but there's just no hope. FlyQuest right. pays off. Procrastination, if you want to call it that. They did stay in there for a while, but either way, they got their man, they got their play, and they got the kill. That means they can push up and take some plates, but Dardock is on to the drink. I thought for sure, after not taking the first bait, that they would have time for the TSM bottom lane to then say, hey, something fishy is going on here. Turtle's not walking up to the mid to the minions, and Ignar has not been here for a good minute now after roaming off of his recall. But... They don't make the call in time. Broken Blade does end up moving up to the minion wave. So while FlyQuest do get the kill, Turtle lost out on a lot of minions for that play. Um, yeah. TSM's bottom lane actually did a very good job not f quickly pushing the wave and just zoning Turtle off because there was no Rakan to show. So nobody can move up with them. And they also get the dragon on top of it. We'll see about the ramifications of this choice later on into the game if TSM can continue dragon stacking have we seen attempted both games but stopped later on by fly quest this time around though it also means that their bottom lane will be weaker um see how many minions turtle can actually collect at the wave now that it's finally been pushed to his turrets he won't get all of them back but he does get a few the interesting thing about the neutral objectives in this series so far is both games tsm have got the first two drakes and then FlyQuest has been the team investing in the Rift Heralds. And I remember when you and I had a conversation about this, on this or that, back at the beginning of this split, and the question was, what's better, early gold lead through Plates and Heralds, or early Drake <laughs> lead? And we both voted the early gold lead, because you can give them the first two Drakes, it doesn't matter. All you have to do is then use that gold to get the rest, and that's what FlyQuest has been playing. So that's kind of what I'm feeling ah, here in this third game ah. again. Big Herald, rain, greater than Drake early. So I will admit that we are also, also both biased in that question because we are both junglers, and the jungler nah. pretty much guaranteed gets a share of that gold off of the Rift Herald. Which <laughs> is he, nice. Yeah, exactly. Very nice for us uh, personally. We'll see if it's nice for FlyQuest. Has worked out for them thus far in the series, even though they did up end up losing that first game, it wasn't because of the early choices they made. It was because of later on at the Nexus. Meanwhile, Dardock trying to get something back here for the bottom side. Again, Turtle's already fairly far behind in CS, and they're gonna put a little bit of extra pressure on this window. 
I like how Turtle made sure that even though he was backing, he's still paying attention as Ignar was forward in the lane, made it so that they were both able to walk away there. Dardock didn't have the chance to get a gank off. And although TSM doesn't get anything from it, they are revealing the position of their jungler there. So FlyQuest was aware, hey, Dardock's on the bottom side of the map, just trying to make a play towards that bot lane. Santorin does still have a one lead, one level lead over his opponent. So slightly stronger there, just objectively, but also in the matchup, Trundle does beat Jarvan. So I still want to see where this Herald decides to get dropped. There's so many plates still standing, so much money that could be taken with this if FlyQuest uses it right. Yeah, and while it was a big hit for the FlyQuest bottom lane for uh, their commitment for the kill top on Broken Blade, I think Turtle's been playing that weak side really intelligently. Uh, you see there, he, he did not take the bait, did not stop his recall. That was a cannon minion wave, which is your opening to go back for that purchase to heal up when you're weak side. Because the cannon minion takes so much longer to die to the turret. You won't lose out on as much experience from minions dying. Sh he still got back there for a decent amount of the gold. And he really does have to respect the temporary lead that has been given to the TSM side. Ignar is back on his roaming business, though. And Rift Herald is used mid. Now, this isn't a super efficient Rift Herald. It's rather just a, I think this is all we're going to get. Let's throw it here. But now the fight's breaking out. Bottom side, River. Ignar going in once more. A lot of damage coming down onto both supports. Biofrost going to drop as Ignar gets himself away. Now they're looking to make even more plays on Kabe. The Emperor's Divide will shuffle him backwards. But the ult is there. Zillion makes sure his ally lives to see another day. And TSM walk away, but only with four men still standing. Biofrost falls for the second time this game. Ignar back at it again. Supports are always in the spotlights for player of the series, but he definitely is. Still escapes this time with his flash and the exhaust, uh, able to get out on the backside, even though Bjergsen was heading down. And FlyQuest pick up the kill in the, in the River Rome on the area of the map where they had been taking hits, had been giving control to TSM. They're able to keep calm and collected in their shot calling. FlyQuest looking clean here in the third game. Well, as clean as you can be for having that full-on 5v5 <laughs> OMG what's happening fight five minutes into the game. Clean Aside from with that, some excitement. Yeah, clean with just a couple spots on the floor where we rushed all the dirt to, but that's okay. Kabe is back up to farming here in the top lane, clearing things out with the Infernum. He does not have the Infinity Edge. Remember last game at 10 minutes and 30 seconds, he already had an Infinity Edge. This time around, he's a little bit slower because he didn't have all that yeah. solo plate money like he got in game number two. And Santorin working on this second Drake means that TSM will not have a two Drake lead here in this game. It's also not going to be an Ocean Soul again. We'll see if we get either Cloud or Infernal. All right, second Infernal Soul of the series. And this is all uh, the domino effect from the kill that FlyQuest got in the river. You saw after that kill, TSM reset and they sent their duo lane up topside. That's TSM choosing, hey, we just lost control off of that pick. Um, we just used the Zillion ultimate. There's no revive for this next fight. So we are not going to contest this dragon. The best thing to do when you are guaranteed not allowed to contest that objective bottom side is go topside, which they did. Power of Evil. Power of Evil caught out now. The bomb strapped to his head. The damage goes through. He's got no way to get away. And a nice punish there from TSM. That gets him a free kill onto the enemy mid laner. Yes, the turret falls in the bottom lane, but that wasn't going to change anyway. Good pick on the POE. Exactly. And that's the key factor. TSM are kind of cutting off the losing area here. Uh, oftentimes, it's advised, especially to people in solo queue, hey, don't concentrate on ganking the losing uh, area of the map. You know, if you just lost control somewhere, attack somewhere else. TSM, they attack top side, they get the turret. They also get a good collapse. Uh, that kill on the power of evil was not a planned kill. They reacted well to the invade where Santorin was trying to mess around with the blue buff and PoE came over to aid them. Really good transition from TSM to strike back, even though FlyQuest uh, have been able to build up a nice lead for themselves and start off the next possible point of confrontation. Teleports are coming in. TSM aren't going to let them have it for free. 
Bjergsen has teleported in. Power of Evil's back alive. He's here. Both of the top laners are on the other end of the map right now. And it doesn't look like either one of them is going to try to hoof it up here. So it will be teleports arriving if a fight breaks out. Power of Evil does not have the Emperor's Divide for a couple more seconds. You can see that cooldown just now becoming available there on the left side of the screen. Everything else is ready to go except Dardoch's Cataclysm. That one's still a quarter of the way off. So about 20, 30 more seconds until that one's ready to go. And that means that Dardoch will have to be careful. Really wants the ulti before he goes in for the engage. Flash is up for Turtle, but Ignar and Power of Evil do not have theirs. Critical for escaping from that Jarvan Cataclysm for some champions. Turtle specifically has no way out unless it's up. And it looks like FlyQuest are going to try to move back into this break. Let's see here, because I don't see TSM also, you know, giving complete control away on this one. Bjergsen trying to push the wave as quickly as possible since he did get the blue off of the kill where they... Uh, pulled off the pincer on Power of Evil. And that's critical. One of these resources that is not focused on so heavily is is the blue buff, is the mana for these mid laners trying to get your mid wave priority first, pushing it into the lane, giving you that 30 second opening to move in on the Rift Herald. TSM will take the opportunity and try and burn it down. FlyQuest in position to steal as Santorin trying to work past the turret. Shelly's really low, and that's Rift Herald taken by the side of TSM. Ignar goes in, he finds a knockup, decides to use the quickness here as well. Solo shows up on the side, but he can't chase into them 1v5. That's a very well <laughs> done disengage by TSM. They get the Herald and they get out. Successful heist. They were all tweeting it after their game versus 100 Thieves. They pull it <laughs> off here on the Rift. They take the Rift Herald, they get out in time. That turret Kabe put down on the ramp uh, dissuaded Santorin from moving in as quickly. The front line there for FlyQuest not able to do it as the teleport from Solo was going behind the Rift Herald pit as well. TSM successfully gained their objective without expending Broken Blade's teleport. So it's it's an absolute successful heist for them as they get more cooldowns off of FlyQuest and the objective. Meanwhile, FlyQuest will push top lane trying to answer with the turret while TSM Rift Herald mid and set up 50 seconds on the Infernal Dragon. That one will be next on the list. Shelly will end up claiming this tier one turret here for the side of TSM. Headbutt will take it low. The rest of the team should be able to back them up, or will they? Shelly taken down. The turret's still standing. Good rotation from FlyQuest to bring enough bodies down here and make sure they can keep that structure alive. Now TSM still have priority over the bottom side river. They'll rotate everyone down. Set up some wards around here. You can see Dardoch just adding a little bit of extra gold and EXP to his pockets here on that Raptor camp. FlyQuest having no teleport on Solo must bring him down to the fight manually, but that means that you have to respect what's going on with Broken Blade in the top lane. He's pushing up towards the tier two right now. If Solo goes to stop him, that means it's pretty much a guaranteed 5v4 at the Drake fight. Solo walks forward to start things off here, but the Blade of the Ruined King active gets Broken Blade away. FlyQuest could not move over to fight for it because of the TP disadvantage, and that is Drake number two for TSM. This is a classic move, very simple strategy uh, that we talk about in the LCS. Top lane teleport advantage for TSM results in the objective taken without any sort of uh, friction between teams. Solo, as you're talking about, has to walk over there because they use both teleports. On the Rift Herald fight, they don't get it. The TSM are deep again. Turtle trying to outplay this one, utilizing the ulti, looking to keep himself alive, flashing away from the ult of Kabe. Biofrost now gonna be taken down, and TSM, although they get everything from Turtle, they don't get the kill. Ignar moves in for the grand entrance, but when the knockup <laughs> doesn't find Dardoch, he doesn't want to activate the quickness. FlyQuest will settle for the kill. FlyQuest just slammed the cookie jar shut. Hands caught by TSM. Again, TSM too deep with this dive. Trying to go under the turret with a support jungle gank there. They do not have the damage to finish it off. You could see Kabe was on the other side of the tower, tried to flash in for an ult to add the extra damage. But Turtle had his flash to dodge away. Broken Blade 2v1. Broken Blade trying to get a kill on a solo before he's taken out. Stepping away from the Emperor's Divide. Solo nearly killed off there. So close to an outplay from Broken Blade. FlyQuest just don't quit here. Again, another counter move. 
They punish TSM for the over dive down bottom side. And then TSM have a straggling member. Broken Blades up top split pushing, but no pressure from the rest of the team because they just failed on bottom side of the map. You have to disengage everybody at the same time or apply pressure with everybody on your team at the same time. Otherwise, the whole strategy will collapse. Uh, in FlyQuest, you can see they're able to rotate multiple people over to pick off Broken Blade without having TSM get anything in counter because they already had, had the first kill. They already had the advantage on the map and they're able to open a wider lead for themselves all the time. Power of Evil scaling up this Azir. Now, cresting the moment where you get into the mid game, your DPS really starts to scale. Leandris plus the Nasher's Tooth done. Plus, you're not up against that assassin victor, right? You're not up against the champion <laughs> that's going to walk up to you and one-shot you in half a second. Yeah, Zillion's got a lot of good things going for him. He's faster than a bat out of hell. He can manage to bring his teammates back mm. to life. But two bombs sluggishly chucked through the air like a game of hot potato versus a bunch of lasers instantly killing you, there's a pretty big difference. And the difference in the damage these two are able to put out in late game team fights will be pretty substantial if PoE keeps playing it like this. Yeah, the thing he does have to worry about is that this time around, TSM have Broken Blade on what you can call an assassin there, Aurelia, because Broken Blade not only has one of these very strong diving champions, but he can be the recipient of the revive from Bjergsen. And it's all about the timing and target selection of Bjergsen's ultimate in these team fights. Here we go though, top side. Starting off with TSM getting the better of the fight at the beginning. Santorin stuck in the Cataclysm, walks himself away now. Pillar dropped down, some damage being done there by the soldiers of Azir. Broken Blade coming into the back part of the fight, but he's gonna be taken down very low, not healed off. Just barely though. So many people, so critically low in this fight, but they're all walking away. Bjergsen's still looking to chase Turtle down even further. Finds the double bomb, finds a triple bomb. Bjergsen's chain CC, he must have heard me saying he doesn't have the firepower and he brings it all down on Turtle. FlyQuest almost get the disengage. Power of Evil had the great Azir ultimate to get Broken Blade, the Aureli assassin out of the back line, but then the re-engage for TSM sets them up for Baron. Can FlyQuest 4v5 it? FlyQuest are gonna have to try. They don't wanna be giving this Baron away at 22 minutes into the game. Power of Evil is engaged on Ignar, looking to provide the peel, but instead they're both likely just gonna die here together. Power of Evil is pop. Broken Blade grabbed the kill there. Santorin working together with Solo to kill off Kabe. TSM's Baron attempt is going to be stopped. Santorin tries to walk away from the Bjergsen Zillion. Dardoch looking to chase even further here now. Broken Blade, he needs the speed, he's got it. Can Turtle get the return kill? The answer is no, Bjergsen is there to prevent specifically that. TP coming down Keep him now, coming. Solo wants to show up. The fight is not done, Kobe. Bjergsen nearly completely out of mana, but you don't need mana to use the Hextech GLP. Solo looking to find the damage on both Broken Blade and Dardoch. They're very low, and Bjergsen's heading for the hills. See you later, guys. I will remember you fondly. Broken Blade is very quick. He continues running out. Bjergsen sticks around long enough <laughs> to give him one more haste. And man, this fight has been going on for a minute. Aurelia's quick step actually looks so funny when she gets sped up by Bjergsen Broken Blade on tippy toes getting out of there. They <laughs> sacrifice Stardock to the God of War in solo on the Aatrox. He flashed for the kill. He got the jungler. That was a wise choice of cooldown expenditure from solo. Ignar now going to try and come heal him up. TSM, what can they do about the Baron? Possible steal in the works? Not going to be the case. We got a whole Christmas tree full of lights in this pit. Control ward here, control ward there, but it does not matter. No jungler means no contest. Baron for FlyQuest. However, the trade will be this Drake for TSM, which puts them at soul point. Unless this Baron gets a lot for the side of FlyQuest, the ramifications here could be pretty huge moving forward. Solo with an exceptional teleport flank there. They, they overdive once again, TSM, they chase that extra kill. And in getting that kill, they expose themselves to the chase down. Let's take another look at the team fight though. Balfrost engaged on power of Evo. They want to finish off the Azir, but you can also look at the top side of your screen. They get the Azir at the cost of sacrificing their Aphelios. Solo and Santorin 
We've got the 2v1 Kabe. And then TSM, they try and chase down. Pearson flashes for it. Bomb number one, onto a minion. Bomb number two, onto a minion. That means they have to chase under the tower to go for this kill. Dardock does tank it and Broken Blade will get it. So kill acquired, but TP, uh, TP flank here is opened up as a possibility. And you know how that one turns out. It's FlyQuest wearing purple back on Summoner's Rift, pushing ahead. That push is about 3,000 gold of a lead right now. They want to build that up pretty substantially with this Baron power play. There are still all three tier two turrets standing. Even the tier one turret only just now collapsed here in the mid lane. FlyQuest have a lot of money they could get here. Turtle working away on this turret. Look at the engage. You have to mark Dardock here. He is the first one to get it off for TSM. Defense successful of the tier two. Oh, but there's your Azir turret. Such a useful component of this champion when it comes to these siege scenarios. It makes it so TSM cannot just jump in and try to engage this and immediately stop the push like that. Solo will continue maintaining pressure here as the one, the four, one split. And because the turret is nearby, TSM do not feel comfortable sticking around the tier two. And that's another one going down in favor of FlyQuest. FlyQuest just relentless here, bullying ahead. If they've got their front line of this trundle with this stone plate just on the front lines, it is so difficult for TSM to engage because trundle does two things. Not only will he shred your front line, uh, the ultimate's so good at softening up the primary engager of the opponents, but a well-played trundle can make a Jarvan look like a fool. You can interrupt the EQ if you're uh, on point with your trundle pillar. So then it would have to come down to a Biofrost ultimate on Nautilus, kind of the only guaranteed ability right. that they can get off. And it's actually hard to get that off on the back line in these situations because Turtle and Power of Evil are playing behind their front line. And it's kind of hard to actually get in range, even though it is a point and click ability does put you at risk because you're not the tankiest when you're facing a trundle. And if Balfrost <laughs> sticks his head out there too, you get the other part of it. We'll see if FlyQuest can get this last remaining tier two turret up in the top side. Looks like no. The Drake not spawning for two minutes, but remember once it does, it's do or die on that for FlyQuest. You don't lose, or you don't get that one. You do lose the soul and give TSM a pretty big bonus moving forward in this game. Santorin and Ignar both hanging out still in the enemy jungle. They want to make sure they're not only providing vision, but clearing out their opponent's vision and making sure Power of Evil is properly shadowed so nobody's able to collapse on him. With Rabadon's death cap now done, this Azir is incredibly scary as long as he's kept alive. You can definitely say that one again. And now that he's got his flash back up, has the self-peel for him and a wild turtle. It's level 16 Azir with the extra level in the ultimate. Flash available for both of those fly quest carries. Um, I mean, honestly, summer spells for everybody will be up before the team fight starts. Solos yeah. only has a few more seconds on it. So um, everybody's going to have all moves at their disposal for this big defense. And I love these kinds set of up you set it up perfectly, Flowers. This, this is going to be a big one here for, for TSM and a tipping point. I honestly think TSM is going to have a difficult time even setting up for it. Look at these deep wards. FlyQuest are already placing down. Now, there is one TSM control ward there in the brush right next to the red side river ramp. But you can see that being cleared out right now by Santorin. Also want to point out again, Ignar has the double stasis ready to go. Zonia's plus stopwatch. <laughs> he tries to save his first stopwatch that builds into a Zonia's and just yeah. not use it specifically for this reason, it seems like. And it gives him such big playmaking opportunity as these things near ever closer. 20 seconds, and TSM is nowhere near the Drake. It looks like they're not even going to contest this one. Yeah, I mean, like we said, it's so difficult for them to actually make their way down the pathway. Uh, Zir's sh soldiers are very good at holding this entry point. Santorin going to try and ward them off. Trundle Pillar uh, being saved for a possible interrupt. Santorin loses one quarter HP, and TSM will move forward. If Dardoch can get a smite steal on this, it could go a very long way. He's hasted up by Bjergsen. Santorin going to be dropped down to about half now, but on the front line is Solo. Let's see what's going to go down with the fight. Biofrost taken very low. Kave is going to be taken down to half. 
Exhaust onto him, and there goes your Zillion ulti. But now Broken Blade's dashing all around the fight. Turtle's able to find the kill into Biofrost, but a lot of stuns into the back line. Almost gonna find the kill onto Ignar, who's still barely kept alive. FlyQuest still have five men going. Ignar is at 100 HP. He has used both stasises. Dardock is around and could try for a Miracle Steal. Solo still on the front line, looking to zone everybody away. Power of Evil wants to perform a similar job. Wild Turtle will be in charge of DPSing the Drake. And with that one taken down, the soul is stopped. The tipping point of the game, Flowers. Baron is available. TSM down Biofrost, but he's about to revive now. And this is their only hope. There's a teleport mid lane. They actually have a flank from Broken Blade. Is this a desperation move from TSM? Do they try and pull it off? Broken Blade walking back down the river makes me think they won't go for it. And FlyQuest with such a big team fight victory there. A fully scaled Azir now with a great team fight setup, having Trundle on the front line. That was a clutch play from FlyQuest. So much of this series has revolved around the tipping point here in the mid game. And they just made such a big play. The one thing that I want to point out is that although TSM did not come out on top in that exchange, they now have a two to zero teleport advantage. And I think they're really going to need to use that for something big if they want to find themselves in a good spot here in this game. They're down four and a half thousand gold. Their opponents just feel much stronger. They have very powerful late game scaling champions. And TSM's gonna really need to do something creative. We saw them do it in game number one with Bjergsen getting the win off of the teleport into the enemy base. And I wanna see some big teleports here out of TSM now. It's a really good point because you always have to take into account the cooldowns that are used. Not only is it the teleports, but the flashes of the carries. TSM still have all of their flashes save for Biofrost. So they can look to be proactive. In this series, TSM have been the ones trying to split push, so they'll gain uh, bottom side momentum with Broken Blade, but FlyQuest forcing a little. Santorin takes some damage there at the start, but now Solo's gonna be on the front line. FlyQuest looking to fall backwards here just a bit. Broken Blade does get subjugated there by the Trundle. Santorin making sure it's dangerous for him to jump in and try to attack FlyQuest head on. TSM now disengaging. Bjergsen trying to find some more of those bombs. Santorin makes sure he doesn't drag it over to the rest of the team, and both sides walk away. There's just a safe DPS discrepancy here, you know, and that it comes a lot from the different champions chosen for mid. Power of Evil on Azir just dumps out damage with the Sand Soldiers. Uh, TSM have to play their fight so much care more carefully. Oh. Dardock goes in! 50-50, Dardock's not able to get it, and that is Santorin making the big smite secure to make sure his team gets the Baron. The Moonlight Vigil will not find the damage, but Power of Evil will find Kabe. It's two and Baron for zero as FlyQuest looks to push even further. They're going to reset now. Baron Empowered Recalls to allow the health bars to go back to full, get everybody shopped up, get them ready to go. Let's take another look at the attempted steal. Oh, it was so close to there. Really well done by Santorin. You gotta say, it's, it's almost... Well, never mind. I was going to say it's more pressure on the team that has, that starts the Baron than the one that steals it. But TSM know if they don't steal it, they are going to lose the game. So uh, high pressure on both sides. And it is Santorin that is able to get the last laugh there with the smite afterwards. 300 HP. Dardock, a valiant attempt there trying to get in. Um, uses his ultimate to go unstoppable so he can remain within range of the Baron. Doesn't get pushed out by anything. Uh, even though he doesn't get it, that's... Uh, small thing that is intelligent that you need to point out. Meanwhile, uh, we talked about the tipping point. It's it's already been surpassed here by FlyQuest, given the compositions. You know, Azir is going to deal uh, an untenable amount of damage in these team fights. And unless TSM can make a big hero play with a super hard engage, Broken Blade, Dardock, and Biofrost all coordinating to take down that FlyQuest backline, uh, relying on the Bjergsen revive. Barring that, it is going to be FlyQuest trying to play slow and steady, pushing in and taking down these inhibitor turrets. Kabe is at four and a half items here. He's got his Runans. He's got 75% crit chance. 
So he can do a good amount of work trying to clear away some of these minions. Nice pull into Wild Turtle there. Biofrost uh -huh. going in onto that back line you were talking about. Turtle having to use the ulti here immediately. Cataclysm down onto three. Kabe moving forward. Damage going down. Turtle going home. TSM have found exactly what they needed. So critical there. Biofrost finds the back line. He burns Turtle's ultimate and then Kabe flashes in. He's got the damage to finish off. This is TSM's opening. They, they won't get a lot of these. It's Infernal Soul. That so Perfect big. time for them to get that pick. All right, here we go. So big for TSM to make that happen right now. Wild Turtle down. Do FlyQuest feel they can contest this? Dardock is at half HP. Biofrost has no ultimate. Power of Evil is still alive. Bjergsen throwing out the Hextech GLP solo there on the front line. Ignar going into the stasis here right at the very start of the fight. Biofrost, Gargoyle, Stoneplate keeps him nice and healthy. Ignar looks to find some sort of an engage opportunity as Solo continues to fight 1v5. Ignar jumps in to make sure he's able to keep his top laner alive as Biofrost is going to be chased away. TSM with critically low health bars on three different players. FlyQuest still maintaining the defense of this Infernal Drake will start it right back up. Dardock decides to leave and 4v5, FlyQuest take the fight. Yep, enough DPS here. Solo chasing through that team fight. I think if it wasn't a split call because Santorin went back to finish the dragon, if all of FlyQuest actually pushed ahead with Solo, they might have been able to chase down more kills though. But you could tell they really wanted to get this dragon off of the rift. Take it now. Uh, and Santorin went back for it, started it up. FlyQuest will be able to defend. They stop the possible resurgence from TSM. I think that was that was definitely a big opening that TSM were able to create with Biofrost finding the hook onto Wild Turtle. But another successful defense there, even in the 4v5, FlyQuest sets them up for a perfect reset and a push number two. We could have another seven Drake game <laughs> if this doesn't end before then. There's a distinct possibility it could because we have Baron spawning in under two minutes and it's still going to be four until that Drake pops off. But it will be Infernal Soul guaranteed the next time a Drake dies on this rift. Oh, man, what a game. Power of Evil also with a stopwatch now in inventory along with five items. He's got a Void Staff completed. He will absolutely eviscerate anyone within range of those soldiers. Yep. Definitely some good options here for FlyQuest as they have got, I feel, more defensive tools. Um for double peel you know turtle did not blow his flash in the last one but tsm have more offensive tools in their in their dive biofrost just kind of created that himself uh in their defense at inhibitor turret and broken blade still has his flash on the aurelia so the assassination potential is here kabe you know not without the or without the flash this time around having used that to follow up might be a little bit more scary for him. He's going to have to be very good with his positioning. But so low. He's got teammates in the river. He's fine. Yeah, he's got a Guardian Angel, too. There's almost no chance that you can kill this guy twice before somebody shows up to help him. So he'll just keep clearing these out. Power of Evil, I pointed out his stopwatch. I also want to point out his flash being up because that could mean a huge Emperor's Divide onto everyone on TSM. We'll see if he's able to find those plays moving forward here. Nice trundle Ooh. pillar means Biofrost is nearly killed and Bjergsen's ultimate is immediately forced. Now granted the cooldown is low, but we'll see if they're able to make anything else happen. Ignar tries to use the ulti and go in on Dardock, but he won't be able to quite find the opportunity he was looking for. That's a big ultimate expended for the side of FlyQuest, and that one will not be immediately re-available. Ignar makes a mistake, he's too far forward. That is a critical error, and TSM will punish. Are you, are you surprised, Flowers? This, this is the closely contested series. The team that is ahead will make a mistake. There will be an opening for the team that is behind. FlyQuest are unable to set up Baron. Look at that, they almost had the full control words. TSM going hard. Turtle under pressure now from Broken Blade. Bombs coming out, but there comes your Zaya ulti. Dardog, he creates a pit that causes Turtle to be absolutely destroyed. 
Broken Blade's taking low. Power of Evil flashes over the wall. Broken Blade's still looking to make more plays happen. He's got the Bjergsen ulti keeping him alive. Bjergsen continues the chase, and TSM has won the fight. This is a big moment for them here in this game. They won't be able to turn it into a Baron, but they have stopped FlyQuest's forward momentum. Whew. So close yet again. They get the pick here. Then, Turtle now dying plus flash blown. And Power of Evil also no flash. So, looking for the restart here. He teleports back out to the Baron. Azir absolutely melts anything. Champions, objectives, yeah. all of them. If he exists, you're butter on a warm knife, my friends. As Baron is down to 1,000 HP, it is going to be secured. Nearly stolen away, but nearly is not going to count. As Broken Blades in the middle of everybody, not able to rely on the Bjergsen ulti. Now Bjergsen going to be chained CC before he's able to even ult himself. Both solo laners of TSM are down. FlyQuest has themselves a Baron. They've got 45 seconds until the soul, and TSM's on the retreat. FlyQuest should go full attack right now. Plenty of time on the death timers. I honestly think they can even push for a Nexus with this. Level 18, Azir, they've still got over 30 seconds on both solo laners from TSM. See if they can end it. Biofrost and Dardock will have to try to frontline for Kabe incredibly well right now. A 3v5 is a daunting task against a six items. All right, I'll say five and a half item. Oblivion Orb's technically not all. They're calling off for the soul flowers. It's too right. risky to push for the win. They know what happened in game number one. They're, oh no. <laughs> they don't, they don't want to get baited into another fight with Bjergsen respawning. So they'll take the guaranteed soul and wait to finish. From TSM being on soul point. Remember, it was three to one in Drakes for TSM, and then FlyQuest got three Drakes unanswered, making sure they were able to control those objectives ever since. They still have 90 seconds left to use on their Baron power play. We'll see if they can get another inhibitor destroyed before that fades away. They should have time to, or if TSM can stop them. Bjergsen will need some big ultis. In the last fight, we saw Broken Blade likely thinking Bjergsen would be able to ult him there in that topside river, but Bjergsen was too far away, so a little bit of miscommunication there. And this game, oh, it's so close to disaster here for TSM. And so close to an advantage for FlyQuest in the series. Such a strong comeback for them after the opening game. The resolve to pick the exact same comp in game number two and prove that they know how to use it. The success found there. Bjergsen, though, looking for the opening for TSM. TSM know that they have to create another one of those opportunities. Find a pick onto somebody, and they've got the zillion speed to look for it, but they don't get it, and FlyQuest steamrolling ahead. The, they did get the flash out of Santorin's Trundle, so that's one small victory that TSM were able to afford themselves as the top lane tier two falls, and FlyQuest will continue the pressure. 25 seconds remain here on the Baron buff. Power of Evil providing the damage there. The Soldiers has to back himself away. Shield's going to keep him protected from the bombs. Honestly, you look at Bjergsen's build. It's a GLP, an Aroa, and a Void Staff. It's not a ton of damage. That's why it can't break through the shields. Not even comparable to what Power of Evil is able to do. Bjergsen immediately ults himself. Dardock's going to be taken down. Power of Evil just... It's a chainsaw on these Soldiers at this point. The man <laughs> attacks lightning fast. Yeah, there's no way a zillion's ever going to be comparable to a, a Zir uh, in this stage of the game, and he is making it show. Power of Evil will be able to push with the rest of FlyQuest on the last inhibitor turret. They're doing it by the books, Flowers. Take yep. all three inhibitors. Get the reinforcements of not only the Sand Soldiers, but also the minions. Super minions will be flooding in to help. Lowest risk possible play as Ignar goes into the stasis. Now Broken Blade under pressure, going to be killed off before the fight even starts. And that should be all she wrote. It's a rampage for Solo. It's a victory for FlyQuest. It's a triple inhibitor game. They will push forward onto the Nexus turrets with only two players from TSM surviving. Three now as Dardock shows back up from the spawn platform. But how are you even going to front line in a situation like this? Between Zaya and Azir, you're going to get absolutely blasted back into the fountain. As Kabe tries to move forward, the Bjergsen ult will do nothing. The shutdown goes through, and FlyQuest will take us to game point. 
They make some changes. They make some reactions.